couldn't quite believe it. After four years, vacation at last. Off to the Mediterranean. To lie on a beach, to soak in the sun, to forget. Oh, mind your place, sir. Oh, no, 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 that's all right. This yours? Yeah. Do you mind if I sit there? No. Oh, thanks for your welcome. My name is Amory. Andrew Amory. How do you do? Andy to my friends. <laughs> well, six hours' time, we'll be in Nice. Mediterranean in six hours, that's something, isn't it? First hop across, Mr... Uh, Drake, no, I made the trip before. Uh, not as many times as I have, I bet. Business? No, vacation. Uh, I always say, when it comes to a vacation, America's good enough for me. Oh, let me help you with that, Mr. Drake. You've got to get no, a real no, tired. No, it's all right, Just thanks. let me uh, show you... I... I can uh, manage. Oh, yeah, sure, sure thing. Well... East, west, home is best. That's what I always say. Mr. Drake, take a look at this. That's something to go back to, isn't it? Well, yes, it sure is. You know, uh, we've met before somewhere, Mr. Amory. Uh, well, I think I'd have remembered if I'd uh, had that pleasure, Mr. Drake. Sure, I know your face. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, I think it must be a face just like mine, huh? You know, Mrs. Emery always says, Andy never forgets a face. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky, I do. Uh, I remember yours, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you mind if I borrow your paper? No, no, no. Might be a funny strip, but I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well. Mr. Amory wasn't pleased when I said I'd met him before. I'd even stopped him talking. Somewhere I'd seen that face. Oh, well. I had six hours to think about it. And then it came to me. He was right. We hadn't met, but I'd seen his photograph or someone very much like him on our records in the Washington files. Professional killer. Assassin for hire. <laughs> Well, Mr. Amory, uh, uh, are you on vacation, too? In our business, Mr. Every government has its Secret Service branch. America at CIA, France, Desi M. Bureau, England, MI5. A messy job. Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. Put it right here, will you? Oh, I'm sorry, son. No small change. See you later, huh? Merci, monsieur. Three, five, one, four, six, two, please. present for a friend. <laughs> Three, five, one, four, six, two. I'd like to speak to George. Or you, George. This is Andy. Yeah, Andy. I just got in. Room 608. You'll be over right away? Fine. Seeing you. Hiya, Drake. Kind of you to look me up, but I'm busy right now. I'll see you later. Oh, huh? I uh, won't keep you long, Mr. Amory. I, uh... I think you said you were here on business. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. Well, I have, uh, I have many business associates in the south of France. If I could be of uh, any help to you at all. Well, uh... that's uh, very kind of you, Mr. Drake. But you see, my business is uh, what you might call specialized. 
So I understand. I don't get you. What don't you get? Well, I mean, what do you know about my... Remember I said that we'd met before? Yeah, I remember. We haven't. Uh, that's right. It was your photograph I'd seen on a file in Washington. But the name wasn't Andrew Amory. No? No. The name was Andrea Samari. Andrew Amory is rather similar, isn't it? <laughs> oh, get me the police. You're heading for a lot of trouble, Drake. I'm a respectable citizen. Yeah, with a gun in your belt. Hello, is that the police? Would you get me Inspector Ahrens, please? Tell him it is John Drake as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, expecting someone? Hello. Oh, is that you, Marcel? Yes. Yes, this is John. No, I'm having a uh, kind of a vacation. Uh, Hello, Marcel. Marcel, you do me a favor. Send someone round to room 608, Hotel Miramar. Arrest the man they find there. All right? Thanks. Thanks very much. It's all right, I've uh, only got the one back. All right, here we go. Sure, that's great. Oh. Well, we got you right into the villa. That's great. It was the coach leaving that gave us the opportunity. Sure. You're uh, not much of a talker, Andy. Uh, I'm not paid to talk. When I saw the big boy in Paris and told him to set up, he said, uh, I can get you just the man. He really knows both games. Yeah, he really knows both games. <laughs> He's got a sense of humor, that fellow. Yeah. And now, uh, Andy, this uh, job you're doing for us, it's got to look like an accident. That's most important. We don't want the police nosing around looking for a murder. I don't give it a thought. I specialize in uh, accidents. <laughs> My client is paying good money, and he doesn't want any mistakes. Well, don't worry, there aren't going to be any. Oh, it's my client who's nervous. Yeah, they're all nervous, otherwise they wouldn't need me. Don't worry, I'll reassure him. Oh, you're not going to meet him. Why not? I'm the only person who knows who he is, and that's how it's got to be. These are his instructions. Well, it's all the same to me, as long as I get paid. Oh, he hasn't even told me who the victim is going to be. Why not? I'm afraid I'll cross him. Uh, uh, so long as I know. You are the only one who will know. How? You'll receive a picture, just a picture in a plain envelope, and the person in the picture, that's the one who has the accident. And make it good. This was strictly none of my business. But somebody wanted someone killed, and that somebody was willing to pay Amory a lot of money to do it. It was reasonable to suppose that the victim lived in the villa. I was now Amory. But what was I supposed to be? What was I supposed to be doing there? That remained to be discovered. Yes, what is it? Monsieur Gautier? It's Mr. Harrison, sir. Good afternoon, Harrison. How do you do? Thank you, Thomas. I am Mr. Baron's secretary. If you have any problems, you come to me. Well, anyway, you are presentable. Why shouldn't I be? So many people in your business have no background. Have you had much to do with very rich people, Mr. Harrison? It needs a great deal of patience. There is one thing. If you want to stay, don't get too friendly with Miss Veronica. Oh, I'll do my best. Just don't do anything. I'll take you to your room. And then I'm sure Mr. Baron will want to give you the once over. And uh, how do you like it, sir? Well, this talk is too long. But Mr. Whitson took the most careful measurements, sir. He may have. My arms haven't shrunk. Look. This is Mr. Harrison, sir. Mr. Baron. Ah, Harrison. Nothing about guns? Should I? 
Well, that's a cautious answer. It uh, sits most comfortably on your shoulder, Mr. Barrow. Yes, sir? Oh, yes, sir. Well, unfortunately, I don't. Kindly have it remade. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, and thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Gautier. Hmm. Over here. Just a small part of my collection. Now, let's see what the cautious Mr. Harrison can do. <laughs> well, take your pick. That little gun, uh, nicely sighted. Yes, you've shot before, all right. Well, leave it there. Ever tried play pigeons? Yeah, I have. Good. Well, I'll take you on sometime. It's my favorite hobby, as a matter of fact. We have the championship down here at the end of the month. I need some practice. Ah, oh, but Monica, my dear. This is the gentleman you've been waiting for. Mr. Harrison, my niece, Miss Barron. How do you do? Hello, Mr. Harrison. When did you get in? Only just arrived. I hope Gautier has made you comfortable. Oh, yes, indeed, very. We want you to feel at home here. I'm sure I will. Shall we start this afternoon, or would that be rushing things too much? Oh, uh, any time you say, Miss Byron. Good, I'll see you in ten minutes. Fine. Do sit yeah. down, won't you? Thank you. Uh, don't discourage her too much, Harrison. She tries hard, but she never ready be any good. It keeps her occupied. Thank you. Mr. Harrison. Uh, look, let's get one thing straight, Miss Barron. Uh, you want to improve your game, don't you? Of course. Well, you must understand that I'm not here to uh, knock the ball around with you. All I'll do today is just study your strokes. I don't want to change your whole game. I'd prefer to improve on your, your natural style. But, Mr. Harrison, I want to concentrate on my backhand, and Lou told me that if I... Lou? My last coach. Who's that? That's Marcel. He looks after the courts. All right. Let's get going, shall we? Uh, Marcel, I'd like to study Miss Barron's ground stroke, the forehand first, all right? Let me see. When you're ready, Miss Barron. At last, I could see a part of the puzzle. Good at both games, he'd said. One game was tennis, the other was murder. Presently, I would receive a picture that would tell me who they intended to murder. And when I could, I'd hand the whole affair over to the police. And that couldn't be too soon, as far as I was concerned. Hello. Yes, yeah, this is George. Andy! Oh, what are you doing there? No. You wait there, I'll be right over. Thank you. 
If you this is Mr. Harrison, Mr. Claymore. How do you do? Mr. Harrison, I'm afraid we'll have to call it a day. Shall we get together tomorrow morning? Whatever you say, Miss Brown. Mr. Claymore. Mr. Claymore, you are not welcome here. I thought I'd made that clear. Now, look, Mr. Barron. Kindly get off my property. I won't have you talking to Ricky like that. And you go up to the house immediately, Veronica. I'm not one of your employees. You can't just order me around. Can't I? It's all right, Veronica. I'm going now. Uh, I'm sorry you should be exposed to our family quarrels, Mr. Harrison. But if you happen to see that young man around here again, that you be kind enough to let me know. luck, Mr. Harrison. And to you, Mr. Byron. We'll have some work to do. If you care to join us for dinner, please do. Come along, Eduardo. Harrison. I'll be right down. I'd like to speak to you alone. All right, just a minute. May I come in? Close the door, please. I, uh, I have some unpleasant news for you. Unpleasant? Yes, Miss Byron. I think that you're in danger. Oh. What's all this about, Mr. Harrison? Well, first of all, my name is not Harrison. I'm not a tennis coach. I, I think you'd better see this. What are you doing here, Mr. Drake? Why do we interest you? And why am I in danger? Miss Barron, can you think of anyone who would benefit from your death? <laughs> can you think of anyone who would benefit from your death? Well, of course not, apart, apart from, from my uncle. But it's How would he benefit? Well, I, I'm an heiress. I've been left a large fortune. But it's in trust. And my uncle's the trustee. Well, that's no reason for his wanting to kill you, unless, unless he's in trouble over money. No. But they say he's in business difficulties. If I died, my money would go to him. Yes, but you, uh, he... Do you think it possible he could do such a thing? He's a strange man. I've known him almost all my life. I, I've lived here with him for years, but... I've always been afraid of him. I think he... Yes? Mr. Drake, I'm frightened. Do you think we should phone the police? Let's do that. If you were afraid, why did you stay with him? He's my guardian. Oh, Thomas, get me the police, please, at once. Your father must have had great confidence in him to make him your sole trustee and your guardian. My uncle has a way of inspiring confidence. Yes? Are you sure? Thomas says the line's out of order. He can't get through the exchange. That's odd. Mr. Drake, this is frightening. Huh? We must get the police at once. Okay. Look, there's a telephone in our private boathouse at the beach. Yeah. It has an outside line. You go straight through the garden, past the tennis court. Yeah. Please hurry. Right. Lock the door. Yes? Pardon me. I'd like to speak to you alone, Mr. Barron. Because you see I'm busy? Uh, my business is more important than Mr. Morelli. Really? Yes. I can't wait. Well, would you 
Will you excuse us a moment, Eduardo? Of course. Thank you. Mr. Harrison, I'm not accustomed to being interrupted in this way. I'm sure that nothing that you have to say to me is so important that it couldn't wait. You think I'm a fool? I don't understand. You hired me through George to get rid of your niece, didn't you? To get rid of my niece? Yes, kill her. A convenient accident. Are you mad? No, Mr. Barron, quite sane. Of course, uh, George didn't tell me it was you, but it, uh, it didn't take much of a guess. Oh, now, don't get scared, Mr. Barron. Everything's going ahead according to plan. No trouble, no complications, as long as you agree that the job is worth a whole lot more than you're paying me. Who are you calling? The police. That's a joke. Oh, Thomas, call the police. Tell them I want them here immediately. Really? Well, come in here right away and bring Gautier. Now, don't tell me you didn't know the outside line was cut, Mr. Barron. Yes. Mr. Barron, if you're so anxious to phone the police, why don't you phone them from the boathouse? The boathouse, Mr. Barron. Look, let's stop playing games, shall we? That's it. Thank you, Mr. Drake. Now, perhaps you'll be good enough to tell me what all this is about. Let's call the police first, shall we? I'll send a car right away. And I'll phone them from the boathouse, Mr. Barron. But that's not an outside line. Are you sure of that? You wouldn't fool me. Now, uh, Gautier, the telephone seems to be out of order. Go down to the boathouse and call the police. But that would be no use, sir. The line comes through the switchboard here. Does Miss Veronica know that? Well, of course, sir. Oh, no. That's very interesting. Drake. We can make it short and sharp or very unpleasant. What do you want? Who put you on to us? How much do the police know? Well, I know you won't believe this, but it was just a coincidence. I, uh, I saw Amory's photograph on a file in Washington, and Georges thought I was him, and from there on I, I played it off the cuff. You're a liar. Oh, it's the truth. Uh, clever idea of yours, Ricky, sending me that photograph of uh, Veronica and Instead of the real victim? Shut up. Instead of Mr. Barron? Oh, yes, Ricky, a, a pleasant dream while it lasted. Marry Veronica, and with the guardian of our fortune out of the way, you'd be a very rich man, wouldn't you? Shut up. But you should never trust these society girls. When we put pressure on her, she, uh, she gave you away. I said he was a liar. She just phoned from the house. That's what I wanted to know. Cut it out. Well, have you been in touch with the police? All right, time's up, gentlemen. All right, Mr. Barron! <laughs> A little late, Mr. Barron. But thanks all the same. Just getting interesting. All right. Come on, boys. Move. Come on, quickly. Arthur Barron was a man with a big heart. Obviously, he understood that Veronica was not the principal culprit, but the victim of infatuation. I felt sure that she would be welcome when she eventually returned. Thank you. 